BBC Radio Scotland. Hello, I'm Mark Watson. This is a download from the BBC. For terms and conditions, please go to www.bbc.co.uk slash Radio Scotland. Hello and welcome to another edition of Scotland's Funny Bits. I'm Lauren Mackay. Coming up in this episode, some royally good jokes. Good times for Prince George, but uh, I can't imagine it was a Merry Christmas for a security who received 800 concealed packages in one day. <laughs> some toilet jokes. I do remember having to pour a bottle of Lucozade out the window of the car and then utilise the bottle. And even some cheeky adult jokes. They shook hands with their private parts. (laughs) (laughs) But first, Waterloo Road stars Andrew Still and Holly Jack joined Fred on Monday and things got a bit rude. Any plans? Nothing that can't be changed. If a better offer came along. What kind of better offer might that be then? Bonnie-shaped offer. Fancy what? I think the music's a giveaway. <laughs> There's something going on, isn't there? It's steamy in there. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, it's so horrible listening to your voice like that. Know. Is that right? Oh, yeah, it's hard. It's really difficult. Well, I do find it uh-huh. I don't yeah, know. Especially the lines as well. A bonnie shaped offer. That was a cracker. <laughs> bonnie? A bonnie shaped offer. I thought it was a body shaped <laughs> offer. <laughs> I oh, oh, that's it's a bit worse. rude. I, I, was, <laughs> I was up a different level from you. <laughs> A body shaped offer. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing, nothing held in reserve for that. Like no, exactly. Nope. A bonnie shaped offer. Yeah. Uh, not one you'll be using yourself then. Oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll maybe, I'll maybe try it and see how it works. Hmm. Wonder what would happen if Andrew tried it out on comedian Sharon Horgan. Horgan women get pregnant pretty quickly. <laughs> you just have to hang a pair of trousers at the bottom of our beds and it's like, yeah. wait, yeah. don't give him all the cred. Yeah. Well, that carelessly discarded pair of pants <laughs> on the floor. I know. Oh, <laughs> a nightmare. <laughs> and you said they shook hands, but we sh- they shook hands with their private parts. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> Sharon Horgan and Rob Delaney there, who were in on Tuesday. And I'm sorry to say the cheeky humour continued with a lot of toilet chat this week. If you've ever wondered what Fred does when he's stuck in traffic, hmm, this one's for you. I do remember having to pour a bottle of Lucozade out the window of the car and then utilise the bottle. No, shush, you did not. <laughs> I did! Oh, for goodness Four sake. and a half hours, Les. What? Can you not... Right, we're, we're, you can get out. Can you, no. <laughs> so you can get out? No. Right, OK. <laughs> so there was... So I wonder what they thought. There would have been somebody coming out going, oh, there's a pile of orange snow. There's some yellow. What's going on here? <laughs> Next, it's green. Oh, no. <laughs> and one of our listeners' wives had a similar problem. She was leaving her work in Greenwich and coming home to Larbert. Uh, she left very early because of the bad weather. But she got stuck in uh, at Moody's Burn kind of area for 20 hours, believe 20 it or not, hours. in the snow because of all the jackknife lorries. And yeah. Whatnot. Um, lots of things went wrong. She'd forgotten her mobile phone, so we didn't know where oh, she was no. or what she was doing, so she borrowed phones. Yeah. Unlike you, she didn't have a Lucasade bottle or the facilities to use an empty bottle. Uh-huh. So, following a conversation we'd had a while ago about friends of ours, or a, a lady friend who'd fallen down a, a grass barn, a, a, a sandy bank in Turkey when she was caught shot, uh-huh. we, she invented a, a little tent. Right. And what she did was open the two doors in the, the the sort of near side of the car. Gotcha. Draped a, draped a pashmina, if you know, you know, these big white staff things, uh-huh. over the top, and made herself quite literally a wee tent in the, the side of the car. A wee tent? A wee tent? A, a, a pashmina? A wee, <laughs> a wee well, ah, that, I'm, glad, no, I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that, Fred, because I was going to say, by opening <laughs> one of the vowels in the, the, the phrase, we now call pashmina. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just off for a pashmina. <laughs> This, of course, led co-host Leslie Kay and tech expert Gary Marshall to reminisce about Japanese toilets. You know, they have the, the toilets with the, the buttons that... And they've been... Have you experienced wash. them? Yes. Have you, did, have you been Never. There? No. Have you never pressed the, N- no. press the button, the no. bum wash button? <laughs> they, they, they came out with one that was controllable by a smartphone app and it was hacked within hours. No. So people were standing right? outside and going, dun, 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 oh. pressing all the buttons. <laughs> well, say, well, on. once, once you've gone there, you never come back to a traditional... <laughs> I know somebody that's had one installed. But I, I know, oh, really? but, if you, but if you had 12 grand or whatever mm. it cost, you'd, you'd put one right? in. Yeah, because yeah, you think, oh, I don't like this, and then as soon as you do, you go, mm. this is fine. How many times has he been to loo today? <laughs> <laughs> My husband's terribly withdrawn. <laughs> He's not well, doctor. <laughs> la, 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 dee, 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 dee. It's fine. New toilet. Luckily, it wasn't all toilet chat on Macaulay & Cool this week. There was actually some news, too. And this week it was the turn of comedians Peppa Evans and Kai Humphreys to cast their eye on some of the biggest stories of the week. 
fox pa. <laughs> Who's so, made a fox pa? The fox pa. This is the um, the American terrorism expert Steve Emerson, who uh, um, um, was on Fox News and claimed. Our very lovely Birmingham uh, is a totally Muslim city where uh-huh. non-Muslims simply don't go. Uh, he's a self-proclaimed, internationally recognised expert on terrorism. Um, I mean, to be fair, I do know that's true because I went to Birmingham University uh, mm-hmm. and I had to convert before they'd accept me. Right. Um, and of course, we know it's not true. It's not true because it's called Birmingham and you'd have to... They would have you changed it by now to it. Birmingham Halal. <laughs> um, no, it's not true. It's not true because uh, my brother lives there, um, Saeed. Uh, no, uh, no, it's not true. It's not true. Uh, and... Uh, but Actually, you probably didn't know this, Fred. He also had some Fox News facts about you. Did um, he? Now, yeah, we which... should explain that the Fox News facts became a trending a topic. A massive trending topic. Uh, where you could just make things up and say, hashtag Fox News hashtag, facts. Yeah, I mean, these aren't made up, though. These are but these actual are true, true okay. facts about you. I'm white-knuckled in anticipation. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, that, uh, he said that the entire Macaulay clan yes. uh, is, in fact, of course, uh, descended all from terrorists um, because, of course, Macaulay comes from Mecca. Oli, uh, meaning, <laughs> ah, Oli, come down to Mecca. Eh? Uh, so uh, that was one True. of them. And the other one was that Fred McCauley has, in fact, played golf with all of the top UK terror suspects, including <laughs> Osama bin Laden, mm-hmm. Tariq Hussain and Cheryl Cole. That's so, right. Uh, so those were some of the facts about no, him. Fred. He, all true. He has since apologised, of course, for this crazy... I mean, uh-huh. it's quite amazing. He said, I obviously didn't do my homework. So what? That's not even uh, an excuse you, you made up. It's not even like you didn't research. No one said that sentence until you said that sentence. But do you not think, <laughs> though, if you were... You know, there are various jobs you can do where you're going to get away with not doing thorough research. Stand-up comedy would be one. <laughs> but if you're calling yourself a terrorism expert, yeah. I think people are wanna, want to know that you're a high Hundred percent on the money. Yeah, yes, I, I, th- I think so. But he has apologised, and uh-huh. he's going to make a donation to a Birmingham charity and take an ad out in a Birmingham paper, right? Um, <coughs> which I assume it will be well, something like "Muslims go home." I'll um, believe it <laughs> when I see the receipt from the charity. Mm. Kai, <laughs> you you love gigged in Birmingham. You, you yeah, know that it's a very rec- welcoming place. Recently, so I think that means I'm Muslim, right? If right. I went there, my uh, my girlfriend's mother's actually Muslim, so maybe uh-huh. Mr. Emerson thinks I caught it. <laughs> like it's a, like it's a contagious thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I, I hate that. Like um, in anything like this, where one person does something, the entire community gets the blame. It's kind of like Jolly Show. <laughs> like whenever that comes on TV, I'm like, that's not us. <laughs> oh, well, to be fair, it's been great for Birmingham. I don't think Birmingham has ever been so uh, re- pr- protected by the UK. Normally, Birmingham is the is go-to the punchline. Yeah, we got, right. we got so <laughs> defensive, going, didn't we? Don't you say that about our Birmingham. It's our Birmingham. And if anyone's going to make fun of it, we are. Thank you very much. Steve Emerson has probably got something up his sleeve to say about Dundee, <laughs> which I happen to love. Dundee's a great place and I've always defended it, but it is the cheap, easy uh, headline uh, punchline to grab. Yeah, Kai... We- uh, headline number two comes your way. OK. Cameron running scared. Is Mr Cameron running scared? So David Cameron refused to take part in a television debate unless the Green Party was involved. Mm-hmm. And since then, it's just been a lot of debate about debates. But uh, it sounds to me, from what I've read, like he's like, doing that childish thing of taking his ball in. Uh-huh. Where he's just like, I- I'm not playing, so you guys can't play. Is that what's happened? That's pretty much. Yeah. Yep. He's saying that unless all the parties are represented, and by all the parties he means all of them bar the SNP, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's got to be Conservative, Labour, Lib Dems, UKIP, Greens. And who? what other peripheral parties are there? Do you, do you know, Kirsty, you're... Def- have got a handle on this better than funky me. Funky Looney Party? That's old, funky, isn't it? <laughs> official <laughs> monster raving Looney oh, Party. Oh, that's it. Yeah, funky, yeah. funky, funky Looney, Looney Party. <laughs> that was a university scam. <laughs> okay. okay. But I think sh- it's, it's all or nothing. Uh-huh. And um, we had somebody on Radio Scotland yesterday who came up with a brilliant idea. I hope you guys like this. And uh, I can't remember the name of the lady. She was on Morning Call. You put all their names into a hat uh-huh. and you draw them out and you don't know who you're going to be debating against oh, thought, until it comes out. <laughs> I thought you were going to say and they go home with the person uh, on, the, that's on the piece of paper. Because uh-huh. that, be, that would get ratings, let uh-huh. me tell you. So, But you could oh. get mixed up. You could have uh, UKIP versus mm-hmm. Sheffield Wednesday. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have I got the wrong end of the stick? And I, Because I haven't, uh, Pippa, investigated this thoroughly. Is Al Murray standing or is Al Murray not standing? I actually read this. I think he's. I think he is standing. Right. Uh, but I mean, In I mean, fanet. guys, it is a joke. It's a joke. Uh-huh. But at the same time, it's not a joke. So I think 
He's making a very good satirical point, isn't he? Because he says he's standing for Th uh, East Thanet, isn't it? Uh -huh. East Thanet. That, and then when he's asked, um, where is that? He says, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I so, hadn't... Uh, yeah. I mean, in all the photos I've seen of Nigel Farage, who loves to hold a pint... Yes. Uh, I, I kind of thought, gosh, she does remind me of somebody, and it didn't... I didn't realise it was Al Murray as the pub landlord and I thought, <laughs> until I saw the two photos. Yeah, he, a worthy is he is mimicking Al Murray in all of these photos. So I think Al's right to stand against Oh, him. yeah, absolutely. But the worrying thing will be if he wins uh, because then Al Murray will suddenly have to be in Parliament and then maybe the joke will end. Mm. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure we'll be able to cope, He or he would be able to cope. He'd miss the gigs. We've got three more to get through, the first of which is this. Take spat! Now, this, I think, is happening in a leafy corner of London where houses cost £20 million That's right. ago. So presumably just round the corner from you, Pepper. That's right. I, funny, because I live next door to Jimmy Page too. Um, no, so this is about Jimmy Page yes. of uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, who's upset um, by Robbie Williams, his new... Uh, his new neighbour from Take That, um, who's bought this, he's bought Michael Winner's uh, old house right. for seventeen point five million pounds. Um, so I'm glad my property will have Crikey. gone up. Um, but it's not a crazy amount of money. Uh, and so Jimmy Page is upset because Robbie Williams wants to change uh, change his, something to his structure, which is nice because I'm glad to see that no matter how big your house is, you have the same neighbourhood yeah. spats. Everyone has, you know, like I've had a similar spat in my flat about my window box attracting squirrels. <laughs> Just call me Snow White, because um, the animals will come to me. But uh, he's upset because he's getting an underground swimming pool or something, uh -huh. and uh, he's worried that you know the usual um, tremors are going to get structure problems. But also that he's going to make this big window that might overlook into his house. All right, uh, Robbie's going to get a big window overlooking into Jimmy's house. But I was like, what? What are you doing that in your house that you're worried Robbie's going to see? Is he air guitaring constantly to <laughs> stairway to heaven? Maybe he actually has a stairway to heaven, <laughs> and he's worried that everyone is going to be wanting to come round to the stairway to heaven and be like, guys, no, that's mine. Uh -huh. It's only yours metaphorically. <laughs> Listening Meanwhile, to one Robbie's, direction. Robbie's building a staircase to hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a swimming pool, as he calls it. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't think Jimmy has a whole lot of love for oh, Robbie Williams. <laughs> Thank you. One. Thank you, well, everyone. Rock and roll isn't what it used to be, is it? No. <laughs> do, you, do, you that, do you think that's why all the best artists die before they're 30? Because if they live any longer, they just become cantankerous old men. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> 46-room mansion in Holland Park. I mean, What do you do in 40? I've got three bedrooms and I don't know what to do with them. Is that plenty enough, is it? Yeah, plenty. Right. Just sleep in a different one every day. I don't know. And there's only three days in a week. But the decoration, you don't want, to, you don't want them all to look the same, do you? No. You imagine oh, no. decorating 46 rooms. I know, oh. I know. Have we done green? We've done green. <laughs> oh, it's not enough colours. No. <laughs> so Robbie's there, but if, if the tremors are going to damage the house, I'm guessing that they're... They're standalone. I mean, they're, they're, mm. they're villas. They're not semi-detached. But also, it really suggests if the, if the tremors are going to affect the house, it um, means that Jimmy Page obviously isn't playing, you know, up to 11 in his house, doesn't it? Because that means that he's not... <laughs> all the time. So it suggests right. he's maybe gone to something slightly more classical. Maybe Jimmy's taken up the violin. Talk about th first world problems, eh? <laughs> right, Ronnie? Right? Yeah. Kai, here comes your next headline. <laughs> Spoiled royally rotten. Who's been spoiled royally rotten, Kai? Prince George has Correct. at Christmas receiving over 800 gifts, including a possum-skinned cloak and a speedboat that doubles as a car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good, it's good times for Prince George, but uh, I can't imagine it was a Merry Christmas for a security who received 800 concealed packages in one day. <laughs> and had to vet every one of them. Yeah. I mean, he's fortunately young enough to be thinking about opening the presents himself, but... Uh, the security guys, do you think they have to go through them all and then re Surely. reseal them? Yeah. But it, <laughs> and as well, I don't, know, I don't know how he's got 800 friends already. I haven't even got that many friends on Facebook, never mind real life. I suspect some of them don't know him too well. No. Nah. Mm, they're, they're just grovelling. I, I imagine it must be quite disheartening if you've gone to the trouble of finding baby George a possum skin cloak uh, and then he's only interested in the wrapping paper. <laughs> <laughs> it must be really heartbreaking. For real, the possum skin coat, I thought that was something that Kai had just made up as a, was... a ridiculous thing to give to anybody. I found that in research. But he got so... that. You probably <laughs> receive more than one, you know, when you get doubles. Like, I got the same bottle of aftershave twice. I'm sure if you get 800 gifts, you make it, like, probably put it in the corner with the other possum uh -huh. skin yeah. cloaks. I mean, come on, come on, Fred. We've all got a possum skin cloak, right? For those cold winter nights? The possum's just a wee creature. 
I know, imagine having, but then it, a baby is quite a wee creature as well, so oh. probably a two possum coat for a baby. <laughs> I'm just looking at the list just now, and you're quite right, possum skin cloak is among it, as is oh. a surfboard. <laughs> a surfboard? Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Why not? Start them young. That's that is brilliant. the gift that someone saw in a service station. That's, <laughs> that's from his uncle Harry, you know the one that gets naked at the parties. Yeah, so, sure. yeah there's always one. Final headline, we've just got time to squeeze this in, Pippa. <laughs> Cheese pieces. Oh yes, this is the uh, Humberside Police are uh, looking for a new, a new uh, member of staff, mm -hmm. and uh, in their applications they've requested that they take a selfie, which is quite <laughs> odd because. Kind of normally it would say, please uh, attach a photo of yourself, maybe yeah. for some. But they, they've literally they've requested a selfie, and their reason for the the selfie is they want they, it's important that they can embrace new technology. And uh, I mean, does that mean that policemen are now expected to take selfies upon crime scenes? Because that that again, take a picture of a crime scene, fine. Take a picture of yourself in the crime scene. Says something very different. If you're uh -huh. just maybe taking pictures with your arms around all the drunks in the city centre, or you know, putting it on Twitter with hashtag Me and the corpse lols. Um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like a, an odd thing, but they, they, they seem to have embraced it. And um, selfies seem, do seem to be a big part of life now. Uh -huh. um, have you got a selfie stick, Fred? I, I don't have a selfie stick. Uh, I have my own interpretation of what a selfie stick might be. Mm, yeah. <laughs> have okay. a look at my Twitter feed. But uh, <laughs> I just wonder if it's the kind of thing you want your, your local plod to be doing. I don't know. No, of course mm. you don't. You'll be taking a picture. They'll be taking pictures of themselves. They're sort of, again, they're supposed to be looking out into society, not looking into themselves. The uh -huh. selfie is in itself selfish. Okay. And that, do they get judged on this if it has to go on the application form? Do yeah, they get judged on their pout? Yeah, or if they've, <laughs> they if they've the used job. the correct filter from Instagram. Yeah, or, or Kai, you, you'll be looking at the ones that, where they've taken them from high up. Going, oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 he's yeah. trying to pretend he's younger than he actually is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Cancelling out the, the wrinkles. Yeah. yeah, get rid of the double chin. Does it mean you have to be sexy to be a policeman now? Police I think women. they all are, aren't they? Are they all sexy? It's the That's uniform. the uniform. Mm. Do you have to be sexy before you put the uniform on, or is it just the uniform? I mean, that's a philosophical question, Isn't really. Isn't it? Um, I don't know. Have you ever put a police uniform on, Fred? Because that would be the ultimate test. <laughs> no, I haven't. Not, not more than a hat and, Just and a, hat. a baton. That's all, <laughs> all I've had I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. Another edition of Scotland's Funny Bits will be available from 6 o'clock next Friday. But from all the team, it's bye for now.